Right, hello everyone. I'm hoping you've had a chance to watch the Library Adventures live session with you wrong. Now we had so many questions from all the different schools we're working with. We didn't have time in the session, so Yurong has very kindly offered to stay behind after school and answer some of the extra questions. So, shall we kick off with... We've got Jack from Woodside Green. How long did it take to create the book from the very first idea right through to getting it published? Okay, so <laughs> could I could I um, could I answer this story, uh, question like uh, from this side and the Chinese side? Oh, definitely, yeah. Because, because the whole process is very different. So normally, it depends on if uh, normally it takes me a long time to think. So to design the idea. So when I uh, let's say Sulin's grandpa, I get to the story, lovely story from Matt. And then I start to think that it takes the most long, longest time. So you need to think about uh, how do I design each page and what uh, star I will put in, what is the color tone I use to create. And then what is the special surprise I want to put in the book. That takes up, normally takes up me one to two years. But I don't mean like I one two years. I just sit there, think about the story because I have other other books doing. So why I'm doing other books, I think about. So I plot the idea behind. That takes the most long time, and then when I have the idea, everything set. Possibly takes me a few months if I really have a lot of time. But remember, I'm a full time mom, so I just really try to. Uh, try to grab the time whenever I can. So normally it takes maybe three, four months. So if I really focused on doing this book. So after that, here comes the difference. In China, if I finish a book, everything today, I send off to scan and then the old images transferred to China. Possibly in two months time, the book can be out. Right. So that will be like a, once it's in China, the art editor will put the text in, we discuss what font, what size, and then we make a mock book and then uh, try to correct the colors, everything. But China is very quick. It's almost two months, the book will be out on the shelf. Here, when everything is done, like a page set, the, uh, the font and the size, text, everything settled. Then after that point, would it take another year, right? To get the book published, printed, and get the get on the shelf. So that's a difference. It's quite a quite an in depth process. Yeah, I know, but I, I, in in China, everything happens very quick. Hmm. I think here because you have to send the book to be printed in another country, but in China it's like they all printed in the local city, so yeah. that's why it's quicker. It's nice to have the comparison. We've not had that question before. Yeah, it's, um, it's, the process is very, very different. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's really interesting. Um, now, we have, from Woodside Green again, Benji asked, I'm not sure whether you've answered this or not, but um, how long did it take to, be pub to become a published illustrator? And Ibrahim asks how old you are when your first book was published. So I think they're meaning, did you have many attempts where you sent things off and then they came back and you had to... Okay. Before you're accepted. So, um, generally speaking, when you finish your degree, you decide to want to be an illustrator or a children's book author. It takes a very long time. People often prepare pro a portfolio and you send out to different publishers. That process, you really need to be patient because some of the publishers, you send out your uh, artwork, they might... So busy, they even not might open your portfolio to look. But normally people prepare like over 20 or 30 portfolio and send it to different publishers. You never know what happens. Yeah. But it, it just, it didn't happen to me because when I started at Royal College of Art, so the, the each publisher, they have a special spy come to your degree show. And then they will say, oh, this student has the potential maybe we can turn her into a children's book illustrator. So then they planned it. So when I finished my degree, I immediately started work with worker. 
but took me four years to do the first book. Right. It, but at that time, sometimes you feel so frustrated. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm so stuck. I don't want to be an illustrator anymore. But if you just carry on, carry on, the whole process, the time, teach you how to become a good illustrator. Fantastic. So when my first book published, uh, yeah. proper book published, so that was 2004. Right. So 2004, how old I? <laughs> that was when I was 34 years old. Right. So I like that message. It's important to keep going and not give up on your dreams. Just keep yeah, going. You, you have to. You really have to. When I do the paper cut, I read it many, many times. I tell myself I had enough. Because paper cut is really so difficult. I was very passive. I basically, I'm a bit afraid, like sitting here, oh, this is orange paper. Today I need to create a, a bird. How do I do it? Where do I do it? And if two birds overlapped, that's most difficult. Right. So many, many times through the 20 years, I tell myself, okay, let's maybe I should try watercolor. But Next day, when I woke up, I tell myself, "Okay, let's carry on again. <laughs> don't give, don't give up, don't give in. When you try to push yourself, you get yeah. surprised. You get surprised. You you see the result. It's worth and persevering. <laughs> it's That's really worth it. It's really worth it. But you needed to tell yourself, carry on. Don't give in. Carry on. Yeah, That's such a good message for the children. I know." Mm. Like my two girls, they'll be doing art and it doesn't always go the way that you wanted it to in your mind, does mm. it? But no, never, I, never. You only <laughs> practice makes perfect. Yeah, keeping going and, yeah. and carrying on is really important. It's really, it's just for everybody. And, uh, did you have a question about the, the colour of this lending? Yeah. Um, Rube from, from my group at Our Lady of Lords School she yeah. was asking about um, the colour blending and maybe, uh, could you say about how you layer okay. the paper? I think she was thinking of the... I am prepared. You know, particularly, okay. I think this is one of her favourite pages. Oh, and okay. She was asking about the, the way you've done the colours. So this page, so what I did, this page possibly takes very, very long time. So you see each color, so how many colors? So bright yellow, orange yellow, orange, and then light yellow, light uh, purple, and then maybe a little bit uh, uh, any other color. So what I did is, this is a really surprise, I didn't plan it, but I needed to know what the main color I put for the sky because it's a dream. So I choose possibly the uh, light purple color. And then of course the dragon, and you want to dance, you want to see the dragon and um, uh, Dylan. So I choose bright yellow color. When I do it, for example, maybe I put three different layers of colors together. So if I cut the, let's see, if I cut the dragon here, maybe on the top, there was the orange color. So when I cut the dragon out, I peel the orange color off. And then maybe here, so uh, the purple color behind, maybe there's orangey color. That's why you see the purple color is a little bit gray. Yeah. So there's another layer of color behind. So most difficult is if you want, uh, um, so if I think about maybe not this book, the other book, if you have so many different, this book is not the, most difficult. If you have a figure, you have a different color. You don't cut each color. You put, if the figure, the whole body has five color, you put five different color sheet down together. Right. Then you, you use like the sheet like this, put down the top. So then you put down the top to cut the shilling and then you have to peel each layer. So that's why also the spray is very important. If the spray you cannot remove, that's the end of it. So yeah. because the spray you can move, so you can peel off, you choose the color what you want. Sometimes maybe during the process, I wanted the bottom layer, 
But then when I, before I reach the bottom layer, I see the surprise. Actually, when the other two colors laid it together, it's more, more, more pleasant or more pleasing for me. So then I leave the two colors together. So I would see now because I'm a friend of paper cut with yeah. my papers or see the scalpels. It's really, it's always brings a surprise. Thank you. That's a wonderful answer. I'm, I think she'll be very happy with that. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine her practicing and with the tissue yeah. paper now and trying things out. I'm going to have a go. I've got a lot of tissue paper. Um, so I'm going to have a try actually sort of layering it up and doing that. Yeah, you, you really get a surprise. So if I show you this one. So in the, in the, in the, in the session, I talked about, you know, the magpie. Yeah. The iridescent body. So what I did, this here is, I used the bright yellow as a background. Then I cut a different color. Maybe this color was a blue. Behind. All right. And this is maybe red or this is like a purple. Then I splash water. So then two colors, they merge together. And it's really, it just comes so beautiful. Yeah. You cannot, you cannot predict it. It just comes as a surprise. This is as well. So different background color, put a different color, you get a surprise. I know you can do a similar thing with a black pen. If you if you get certain black um, felt pens and you draw a picture and put water over it, some of them um, turn into all sorts of different rainbow colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly the same. Yes. That's a good thing. Um, you can do the play. I'm going to go and do that um, in my lunch break. <laughs> That's me sorted. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Misper from Woodside Green says, are any of the books you've illustrated based on a true story? Now, I think you've touched on this answer earlier. Uh, yes, actually, let me just quickly show you another book. That's a really very touching book. Uh, let me, okay. Where is it? Mm -hmm. I love that we're getting to see inside your studio as well. That's always exciting. Yeah, I, I have, a, I have a, uh, all the studio, all the bookshelves there and the drawers. My husband and my little boy, they made it for me. Okay, so this is a book, actually, this is a book. Sorry, I just uh, didn't get the English version. So this is a book. It's also published uh, in here. It's called The Visible Sound. The Visible Sound. So this is a book about a deaf child. And uh, the story is based on a true, um, true dancer. So she, she, she's, called, um, uh, she's called Mr. Tay. And when she was two years old, she had a disease. So she was unwell. And then since then, she lost her hearing. But then she tried uh, different ways to think about how to see the sound. So I actually, before I did this book, I went to the wild and I tried to cover my ears and I oh, tried yeah. to use my eyes to catch the sound. It's very, very difficult. So the book started like this. It's, it's, uh, it's basically a, like, uh, this book is a bit like a stage play. Each stage has a very color tone. So this is like a desperate, she lost the hearing. So it's all black. So she, the parents took her different places to see different doctors, but it didn't help at all. And then she helped herself. You know, the old bus has a big engine in front yeah. of the driver. So once she was on the way back from the hospital, she was sitting beside the engine. Then she felt the vibration. So this is how she started to catch the sound. So we imagine there's a tiger inside of the engine, gives a roar so she can feel the sound. And then this is, I don't know whether you know, this is a popcorn machine. All right. So oh, like yeah. you put the popcorn there and the big net around. So this, this part heat on the fire. And after a few minutes, the man would open it. So you hear big boom, all the popcorn come out into the net. So that the, the, normally, all the people will cover the ears because the sound is so strong. But to her, she's called a tiny rice. She's not. She imagined mm -hmm. all the monkeys jumping out. So she 
feel the ground, she felt the vibration. That's why how she catches sound. So things then she started to use her heart. So this is the shape of heart. She oh, started yeah. to use her heart to catch all the sound wave. And then I use like a spring, the petal of swallows, summer swim in the petal of fish. So all these pattern is like a sound pattern. And then autumn, winter. So she try use her eye to imagine the pattern of the sound. So then she can see the visible sound. Right. And here, so this one, if you look carefully, that's her learning mouth language. And this is the learning hand. And this one is to feel the vibration on the floor. So if you link these three images together, it's a whole body. How to from the top to the toe to catch oh, the tongue. And then eventually she become a very successful dancer. So her favorite dance is pick peacock dance That's and gorgeous. it's really amazing she had she and her team had a performance for chinese new year gala nobody will ever imagine they cannot hear the sound so this is a really real story based on her so eventually she played on the stage and she found her stage of her life again Mm. Is that only in China? Is there not an English version of that yeah, one yet? It's in English. In oh, as there well. is one. But you, yeah. right. the, the English book is called The Visible Sound. The same cover, but yes. it's called The Visible Sound. I just I just didn't find one, so I grabbed oh. the Chinese I one. need to get that because that is amazing. We could use that with a lot of our <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just to teach you how I, after this book, I yes. was so impressed. I just feel like we take everything so granted. Mm. But actually, when you look at uh, uh, Tiny Rice, I learned so much from her. Yeah. We can never see the sound, but she can. And she catch the sound and she carried on to explore herself. That is very encouraging. Definitely. Well, mm -hmm. thank you, Misba, for that question. We've just got, I think, a couple more left, then we'll let you go. Um, Neith says, from Woodside Green, did the author, Matt, come up with the title or did you have any input in it? I think he did. And we all, all loved the title, so that was yes. easy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I think possibly, possibly Suling was a real name for right. the uh, child in his classroom. But I, we never asked. He said it's based on his uh, true story in the classroom. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I think you've answered Rafi's question as well. Were you mm -hmm. born in England? And if not, how old were you when you came here? I think not, everybody, not everybody knows my age. <laughs> so so I did you go to England in 1997? Is that when you were studying to do your uh, Royal College of Art? No, 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 no. That, so I I supposed to go to Hong Kong to study graphic design. Now I got married with my German husband. And he was he moved he moved to I think he was in Switzerland, then he moved in uh, US, then eventually he came back here. Right. So then that's why so I then I didn't go to Hong Kong. So I got married, I come here, and then I uh, I the following year I started uh, to study at Royal College of Art. Excellent. Right, the final question. Mm hmm now they've put, I think they've written this before they knew too much about your work. So Ronan's asked from Meltham mm. CV, do you like, um, what do you like drawing more, the traditional brush paintings or the ske sketching and cartoon style? So we could add into that all the paper cutting, which yes. is your very favorite. Um, my favorite, to be honest, I think um, uh, to be, to be, okay, let me quickly get something to show you. It's related to the question. It's like a gold mine of things in there. You just keep producing all these amazing things. To show. I know because recently I'm doing too many interviews, so I, I <laughs> figured out all my old work. Okay, so I just want to show you which illustration I got a Quentin Blake's award. Oh, yeah. 
It's this. Oh, is so, that a whole long sketchbook? Yeah, so it's like a concertina. Yeah. It's, oh, about, it's about a couple in the morning in front of the mirror. And there's another one about a couple in front of the mirror in the evening. So basically, it's like the line is the, the line is the mirror. So they, right. they look at themselves in the mirror, you know, when you get up, you're yawning, and you start to brush teeth, you put your earrings on. So it's just yeah. very simple as this. So this is exactly what I submitted for the Quentin Blake Narrative Award. So you see this brush teeth. It's just like every day, there's a, this is a shaving. <laughs> 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 and then put a little bit of oh, wow. and the lipstick. So this is in the morning, and then there's another one like um, in the evening. So, oh, brilliant! So I think um, when uh, I think I, this is a little bit cartoonish. So I think it's a it's a bit like a Quentin's style, and mm -hmm. I love this because this is this is once really catch the moment most. Yeah. Lovely. And uh, uh, so from there, I then started to do. Um, paper cut and a bit of drawing. But I think that way for me is I can deliver more color to the picture books and for yeah. children to see the colors. And of course now I am a friend of the paper cut. I think I can use any color I want and I can create colors by laying different paper, colored papers. So this, I want to say this is now my favorite way to create picture books. But right. when I collect ideas, I still do sketch, very quick drawings like these ones. Fantastic. Oh, I love these extra questions. Um, I've, got no, one, I, I've got one left, if that's yeah. OK. So okay, yeah. it's, it's my last one anyway. Jonathan okay. from Our Lady of Lords, he was mm -hmm. asking about um, the way that you get the detail into the pictures after the paper cuts in Shulin's grandpa. Mm -hmm. And he was really interested to find out more about that. Okay, this is a really personal question. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a good question because uh, I try to hide a lot of details in each book. Why I do that is for myself. And of course, for readers, they discover each time when they read the story. I don't reveal. Some of them hide very tiny things. And why I do that is try to help myself get stimulated. So like I often, when I finish each book, I will ask my children, my husband, find their favorite page, hide something. Like my, my husband always tried to hide him on the ski, skiing, because that's his favorite sport. So he nice. can hide him on a leaf, behind a leaf or behind somebody's uh, skirt. So anywhere they want. So all these little details. So here, like um, the teacher, uh, Miss Rogers, I draw the mountain and the dress. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it's, it, all these little things, it's just something yeah. I love. And I can build into the world, into the picture book. And I feel excited. So this is something bring my energy going. Keep myself always fresh to do next page. So yes. I would say um, by now, I try to be a teacher for myself and get myself going. And all the little things, they almost like my teacher to help me going forward as well. So this is, I would say, this is actually a tip for myself. How do I always get the energy? And how do I always make myself excited, finish this book, look forward to doing next book? Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to have to go back now and I'm going to have to look at every page and see if I can spot some extra details. I've already there got many, open. There are many pandas and there are many dragons. <laughs> right. We will have a look for those. Well, thank you. That's all. That's all our extra questions. That's been amazing. I'll just... Um, I'll say thank you for doing that. If you could, are you right to say goodbye to the shadowing groups? Yes. And thank you so much. And I love all these questions actually making me feel excited for myself. Excellent. Right. We will see you again, Yurong. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.